What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So Blender 4.0 is finally here and with it come a ton of new features and interesting things you can do with Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download Blender 4.0 by just going to blender.org and clicking on the download button on the front page. Or if you manage Blender in different ways like using the Blender launcher, um, then it's gonna show up under your downloads list in the Blender launcher as well. But let's take a look at some of the new features contained inside of the new version. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is it has a new UI. Um, it doesn't really change a lot of the like general things about Blender, but the text is in a different font. And just like overall, they've kind of streamlined some different things that I don't think it looks massively different, but they have kind of updated the interface to make it a little more, more readable, other things like that. All right, so the principal BSDF node looks a little bit different. Um, probably the biggest thing in here is that they've added this new sheen and this new coat, which are basically things that give you the ability to add an additional layer of either like shading or um, emissive material. Um, so you're gonna find that in the principal BSDF shader. Notice how that looks a little bit different. It's got some kind of drop downs in it now, but your sheen and your coat are gonna be down below and you can see how I can adjust the weight in here and you can use this in order to add like a color coat. And so you've got the coat which has been added, which is basically a coat that goes on top of your materials, which basically simulates like an additional coat, kind of like car paint. Um, and you can kind of see that in the example in the principal BSDF manual. Um, but then there's also the option for sheen. And what the sheen is going to do is that's gonna simulate super small fibers on the surface. So you can use this in order to um, kind of adjust and work not only with cloth, but with other things as well. And if you open that up um, inside a blender, notice how the principal BSDF now has these drop downs in here. And if you take a look at those, you can click on these right here and you can adjust the weight as well as the roughness of those coats on here. And notice what that's doing is that's adjusting the way that your materials look. So you can use the coat or you can use the sheen inside of the principled BSDF. So definitely worth playing around with to see what you can do with that. And so one of the intended uses for the coat is to give you the ability to simulate emissive textures behind glass. So for like screens or something like that. So you can kind of see this example right here where you've got an emissive mesh, but then you're adding like a glass layer over top of this. All right, so next up, they've added a new color management mode, which is something I think a lot of people have been waiting for because I think a lot of people weren't super happy with the way that the uh, filmic color management was handling overexposed areas. So now we've got a new option in there for AGX. And so what's gonna happen with the AGX is it's basically going to change your color profile so that your bright colors go towards a white um, rather than kind of sticking with the colors like this. And you can really see that with this example right here, it looks a lot more realistic. Um, and so what this does is this really helps with handling things like saturation. So if you click back and forth between these, right, notice how these look kind of like overexposed and they just don't look super good. If you look at the AGX options, you can see how this handles this a lot better. And so like for example, and um, obviously I didn't put a lot of time into this scene, but you can find this by going into your um, render properties under color management. You can pick your view transform and you can put it on AGX like this. Notice how my light is tending more towards white when I do that. And then there is also an option here for punchy. And notice how when you do the punchy, this is gonna give you a lot better contrast in here around some of these areas. So definitely something you should look at for your color management inside of your renderings um, because it could really help them start looking a lot better from a color standpoint. All right, so I'm gonna skip ahead for a second to one of the features that I'm really excited about, um, being more from like an architectural visualization CAD background. Um, and we've talked about on this channel before, but there's improvements to the snapping and the way that you move objects in Blender. Um, and so specifically what I'm talking about is A, the ability for the cursor to change shape and give you inferences. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, you can now set the snap base for a move on an object by clicking. And then also, there's they also added the ability to orbit while using a tool. So jump, jumping over into Blender really quick. So let's say we were to jump back over here and um, let's say that I had a shape that I wanted to move. Okay, and so we've got this shape right here. Well, the way that we used to move things is we could do a G and then tap a Y or an X or whatever and move an object around. You could also do some snapping if you wanted to, right? So you can snap to a vertex if you wanted to do that and then um, kind of like have things snap together. But 
but it wasn't necessarily like ultra precise, right? See how this is kind of like jumping around? Even though I tried to set this corner as a base, um, it just kind of jumps around and places things wherever. Well now, with this tool active, if you do a G, and then you hit the B key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in snap base mode. And so when it puts you in snap base mode, notice how I'm getting kind of inference points over my object. And you'll get more if you turn on other inference types, but I can click to set a base point, and then I can move, and this is going to snap that base point to another point in here. And so what that does is that allows for really quick movement. So another way that you could do this, is so you could even set a base point based on this corner and then move the object in kind of the X direction based on that base point right here, and then click again. So you don't have to set your base point on an object. That does also work in edit mode. So if I do a G, B, click, and then move my mouse, then I can move this using that base point to wherever I want it to go. Okay, and so the other thing that I'm super excited about, and I didn't even know this um, until after I put out a video on the feature just in general, is the way that Blender has always worked is if you had a tool active, right? So if you had the move tool active and you clicked and dragged the middle mouse button, notice how you get this like weird inferencing along directions things um, that I don't know if people were using, maybe they were, um, but you can't navigate or you couldn't navigate around. Well, there's an option in your preferences. If you go into your key map, there's an option for transform navigation with alt. What that means is that means that if you have this tool active and you hold the alt key and then you click and drag your middle mouse button, you can actually orbit around while that tool is active like this, which is massively helpful. However, what I didn't realize and something that I'm going to use even more is if you just uncheck that box for transform navigation with alt, that makes this the default way that it moves around. So when I do this, right, notice how I'm able to have this tool active and move this object around and navigate while I'm doing that. So that has been one of the things that has frustrated me most about um, Blender navigation that has now been fixed is I can now move an object and move around in my scene using zooming, orbiting, whatever, in order to more quickly place objects. So super valuable for me. All right, so the Voronoi texture node um, has some additional options in here, including the option to use fractal noise. That basically gives you the ability to do unlimited procedural detail. I don't use this node a ton, but if you do, I could see this being like massively helpful for generating this level of detail. All right, so next up, we've got a feature that people have been asking for for a long time, which is the ability to do light linking. So basically what that, were, what that does is that gives you the ability to set which lights affect specific objects. So like notice in this example right here, right now, if you look at the reflection in the the eyes of the creature, you can see kind of the background lights. But if you look at this with the light linking on, you can set this so that those lights don't affect these objects anymore. So they can light your scene without um, you having to worry about them showing up in the background or anything like that. All right, and so this is really easy to do. So for your point light or whatever light you're using, if you go over into the option for object, go down to shading and you go to light linking, what you can do is you can drag objects in here. So if I drag these spheres in here, right? And I can check the box or uncheck the box, but you can see how when we do this, you can set if objects are going to receive light from a particular object like this. And you can also set up shadow linking. So what shadow linking is going to do is it's gonna give you the ability to set if an object is going to affect the shadows or not. So. Notice how if I toggle this on or off, this object, and I'm, there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this kind of a blue color so you can see it a little better. So I've got a white light over here and a blue light over here. And so you can use this to set both if the object is going to receive the light or not, as well as if the object is going to affect the shadows or not using this new light linking. You can also add collections in here if you wanted to do that. And so we've also got a path guiding feature that's gonna work on your glossy surfaces. This is one I haven't had a chance to really test out yet, but basically it's designed to uh, reduce noise on shiny surfaces. You can see how um, this is giving me a lot better detail on what the lighting is doing um, when we're dealing with glossy surfaces in this example. All right, so we've also got an expansion to geometry nodes that allow that now allows geometry nodes functions to be run as regular operators. All right, so basically what this means is your geometry 
entry node setups can be run as regular operators in your scene. So this is an example file from Tim Greenberg or Passive Star on X, I guess now, not Twitter. All right, so basically the way that this works is you can select edges. And um, so if I tab into edit mode, right, and see how I've got this edge selection in here. If I go to edges, notice how edges to pipes is showing up. Well, this is actually a geometry node group that's been created in here that's going to do something. So in this case, it's going to set your edges to pipes, so exactly what it sounds like in here. So for me, this is like massively interesting because there's so much you could do with it, um, but you can actually set this up where that your geometry nodes are actually tools in Blender without having to know how to write Python code or anything like that. So super, super excited to see what people are gonna be able to do with this. Um, this is something that uh, honestly could be a game changer for the way that Blender works in general, and I'm excited to see where it goes. And so they've also added the ability to do repeats inside of geometry nodes. And so with the repeat zones geometry node, this is gonna give us the ability to see some things um, where geometry nodes are going to loop, which allows you to do interesting things over time and other things like that. So just a lot going on with geometry nodes right now. And so there's a ton of other stuff going on, like they've improved the search functionality. Oh, one thing you are going to see that's going to be a little bit different is, let's say we're just going to jump into this file right here. If you jump over into the modifier section, what they've done is they've taken those modifiers and they've rolled them up into different sections like this. So for me, this isn't that big of a deal, but for a lot of people, they haven't really liked that change. Um, I personally am not bothered by it at all, um, but they have kind of rolled these up together. Um, and you will notice that search functionality has been kind of approved across the improved across the board. So like if I do a shift A, now they've added the ability to search for different features. So right, I can click in here and I can type in, you know, whatever I'm looking for. So if you don't want to go through a bunch of menus or other things like that to find what you're looking for, um, they have added the search functionality in there. And so there have been some usability changes for uh, key maps. You can kind of watch this video if you want to check that out. Um, they've also added bone collections in here. So I don't do a ton of rigging. So for me, maybe this isn't going to affect my life all that much, but my understanding is if you do use um, any kind of rigging and you work with the bones a lot, uh, these collections can be especially helpful. So um, we do also have the ability to do click and slide operations with the graph editor. So um, you can see how when, when he's selecting these, there's kind of like this slide at the top of the page that you can use in order to make adjustments. So for graph editor, we've got some changes in here. There's a bunch of changes to the animation and rigging section, which you can read on this release page. Okay. So they have updated the human base meshes bundle, which you can download for free. So you can go find that. They've linked to it on this page. So they've got even more great free resources in there um, if you do want to work a little bit more with characters. And so there, there's a bunch of other changes in here as well. Um, so you can take a look at those on this release notes page um, and get more information on those if you want to do that. We've also got a new splash screen from Gaku Tata, which you can download on this page as well and play around with. So overall, big new upgrade for me. Me, the snapping and the orbit while working with tools is a huge deal. The geometry nodes improvements are just getting better and better and better. I'm excited to see where those can take Blender. But leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite new features are. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.